One of the youngest organizations to have a relationship of a special consultative status with the Economic and Social Council. It was our first year here in the ECOSOC chamber and we're really honored. Uh, it's a very special opportunity for us together to share with you um, what, what can happen in a future where leaders are empowered starting from early in their lives to identify with passion challenges that we can tackle and to gather people together to follow a vision to produce results. And you're going to hear about their results in the uh, presentations that they have prepared today as a they have presentation, conversation, and inspiration. Uh, so with great pleasure, I will now uh, introduce you to Swati Subal, who is our great organizer, uh, co-founder, and trustee for One Million for a Billion. Uh, she has planned a great agenda for us today. Good afternoon and namaste. Can I hear a namaste from? Namaste. namaste. So wonderful to have all of you here. And uh, especially our uh, special guest uh, uh, today afternoon, uh, Amb Ambassador Madam uh, Ruchira Kamboj, Mr. Mahir Nasir, Mr. Vuk Jingshang, welcome. And uh, we are really delighted to have you at our summit. One million for one billion, or one and one B, originated as an idea harboring an ambitious vision to empower a million change makers to create a positive change in a billion lives. Peace TV reporters have been active at the UN headquarters since 2010 the age of former UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. They are often invited to gather pictures and news about high-level meetings and events at the UN headquarters. We usually report live on the scene the events of dozens of countries, including the US, France, the UK, Israel, Germany, Russia, Egypt, Kuwait, Bulgaria, Ukraine, and Morocco and the EU at the UN headquarters and their residences in New York. Our news reports have, in part, kept the international community up to date with the work of different governments so that people everywhere will know the great efforts and contributions of the UN to world peace, international affairs, and multilateralism. It is heartening to see the United Nations, along with corporates, academia, and civil society, come together to nurture and support these young minds. And in India, I will say that we truly believe in the transformative power of youth. We recognize that the path to achieving the SDGs by 2030 is through harnessing the energy, the creativity, and the innovation of our young population. And as these students demonstrate their projects, they also present a blueprint a blueprint for how youth-led initiatives can be scaled and replicated across the globe. As India's representative to the United Nations, I am immensely proud of what these young leaders have accomplished. Their vo work, I would say, goes beyond national boundaries. It contributes to a global narrative of hope, resilience, and innovation. They are not just the leaders of tomorrow, they are the change makers of today. And uh, let me also here commend the efforts of the One Million, One Billion Foundation for creating this platform 
and for their unwavering commitment to empowering youth. To our young leaders, I will say, your journey has just begun. Continue to inspire, innovate, and lead. The future is not only in your hands, you are the future. M1B was created, was creating a roadmap for achieving just that. Overcoming differences, overcoming challenges, world leaders came together to tell us how we can reach 2030. An agenda that will create a world in which there is no poverty, or at least no extreme poverty, nobody goes hungry, education is available for everybody around the world, gender equality, we have less inequality, we are dealing and tackling all of the other issues and challenges that we're facing. And much has been done, but we are not on track. And I think this is why it's important when generation like yours, innovators, young people in India, but also elsewhere in the world come together to address those challenges and see how technology can actually help us meet those challenges. According to the Sec General's report from July of this year, we are only 15% of where we need to be in achieving the SDGs by 2030. That looks like a mighty challenge. We can either feel pessimistic and saying we're never gonna achieve the SDGs, or we can borrow from a sport and football analogy. No game in sport is ever lost in the first half. You could be down five goals, 10 goals in the first half, but in the halftime, the players meet with the coach and the coach gives them encouraging remarks. And this is what happened this year in the SDG summit in September. World leaders were reminded of the promises they made in 2015 and of the fact that we have seven years left to achieve the SDGs. And we have to double the effort, we have to double the energy to actually get us to where we need to be. Now we know that the world was impacted by COVID, by the pandemic. That has set us back. It has also been impacted by conflict. Dr. Swati and some of the students, as well as the, um, uh, of the teachers, who came all the way from India, welcome to the United Nations. It has been a long journey for you to come here, and it must be really tiring, uh, because it's um, the past the midnight in Indian time. But I can see uh, the fresh eyes on the uh, and uh, um, they got present to what their purposes they've got present to what their career goals look like with humanity at the center of it they are human centric leaders that I'm so proud of this panel which is all about community and inclusivity each of the change makers that are about to present to you have done projects along the lines of community and inclusivity. And I hope that you're impressed with the work that these young leaders have done in furthering the cause of the SDGs. I'm gonna ask each of them in turn to introduce themselves and their work. Um, and we'll just go straight down the line, go ahead. I was 15 when I first, uh, when I had my first encounter with street harassment, getting catcalled on the subway. And since that young age, oh, sorry. And since that young age, the experience has continued to grow. Whether it be getting followed home from the grocery store, stalked at the airport, or groped at a concert. These experiences are not unique. Every woman has a story, and we aim to prevent that. Project Pink focuses on the people around the incident to help derail it. Bystander intervention is a proven methodology, but the idea is that helping a person in trouble makes the situation better for them. The five Ds of bystander intervention are distract, delegate, document, direct, and delay. We My cousin was only four years old when she was sexually abused by her 50-year-old neighbor. And thus, Ohan and I, Krish, started the project Save Little Hearts, which aims to create awareness on child sexual abuse by educating underprivileged children 
on safe touch, unsafe touch, and response systems. We've educated over 150 children um, in collaboration with the Rotary Club and other NGOs across Bangalore. We've also linked um, a psychologist with a few government schools to visit them on a quarterly basis and reiterate the safety guidelines. We're currently developing our own animated book, which is called Safety with Super Maya, that we plan to distribute to these government schools. The silence surrounding child sexual abuse is deafening. Many victims suffer in shame and fear, unaware that they're not alone. So join us in breaking the silence and creating a world where children feel safe, supported, and empowered. Thank you. But my mother had the luxury of screening facilities and knowledge about the symptoms she should look out for. But 70% of Indian women, they don't. And when they hear these words, when their children hear these words, the situation is far, far darker. Project Sirona was created with one purpose, to bridge the gap in cancer screening and cancer care that is so apparent today. To future leaders and a student of our Purpose Academy and the work that she has been doing, and this story is from the eyes of the award-winning Kant's uh, filmmaker, Amit Madhesia. One of the big things that we are trying to do is how do we make change making go mainstream? How can we inspire millions and millions of young people to go beyond themselves and take actions for their community? And in that endeavor, here is the first short documentary that we would like to present to you. So um, currently, we live in a world where nine out of 10 lives could be saved by performing CPR during a cardiac arrest. Um, four to five million deaths occur each year because of cardiac arrests. And I feel like to reach the UN SDG goals by 2030, we need everybody, every single person, every single youth to recognize their capabilities, to recognize their power, and everybody has power instilled within them. And they have to take this to another level. They have to combine their passion with their project. As we all know, the future in the 21st century is all about the digital revolution. But there are millions of people who don't have access to digital skills, have never written an email, or have never even turned on a computer. And a big part of what we want to accomplish through our digital Nagrik program is to reach those people and tell them a little bit about how to behave online, what it means to be a digital citizen. When I came here a year ago, we had just introduced our digital citizenship curriculum. And uh, a lot has happened in the last year. And so I'd like to start with a short film to show all the events that have happened over the last year in our digital citizenship One million hearts, one, one billion dreams, for every ocean, for every fresh clean stream, we are the goals and we know the future's bright, we know together we will all see the light. Our world is beautiful. Let's give it all our love. Men and women equally. Living with clean energy. Our world is beautiful. This is why we activate Leading with these global goals To foster peace and prosperity One, one hearts unite One, our voice is strong For education So learning lasts and lives are long we are change makers and in partnership we stand for every living creature all across every land. Our world is beautiful, let's give it 
are our love. Well-being and healthy life, keeping commerce responsible. Our world is beautiful. This is why we activate, leading with these global goals. Clean air will be our fate. For every climate, we fight the change. For every city, we innovate. Honest work in every community. Everyone, one million for one billion. Ending hunger and ending poverty. Again, one million for one billion. Our world is beautiful. Let's give it all our love. Men and women equally. Living with clean energy. Our world is beautiful. We inspire each other. Working for our global goals. Unity, we all rise above, rise above all. One million for one billion. Very nicely done. Good work, singers. Thank you very much. Yeah. 